Be seated. It does seem like coming home to come back. We hearing back there from your pastor the wonderful things that the Lord has been doing here at the home church since I was here. That you've almost had a constant revival of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Oh, isn't it wonderful to hit God's time just right high? And it does something to us. Well, we've had one at the tabernacle. Uh, I had a series of subjects I was telling you on the seven last church ages, and oh my. When I finished up last Sunday with the fourth chapter of Revelation, my congregation was about, little, about 400 people or 350, something like that. And I, while I was speaking in a call the prayer line and speaking on the reflection from the Shekinah glory to the stars, to the char stars, to the sea of glass, where the sacrifices is washed, you know, which represents sinners, the waters of separation. And... While I was speaking on that and turned then to pray for the sick, the angel of the Lord came right down before them all, went right over and stood in the corner there, and 300 or more people stood and looked at it for 15 minutes, screaming, crying, and praising God. All of them looked the first time it ever come like that before a church. Just come right in and moved right over there and stood there. I said, can you see it? Everybody again screaming and falling and... There it was, the big amber light of the pillar of fire, just perfectly round, standing there. And then it began to shade itself and shaded every one of those church ages just exactly the way I'd taught them in that pillar of fire. God knows that's the truth here before his Bible. Uh, he, we're living in the end time, surely. Oh, I'm so glad that the prophet promised it would be light in the evening. Mm -hmm. In this hour that when it's so dark in the world and to know that we are living and walking in the light. The light that he promised, said he would do it, promised he would, and here we are, the privileged people tonight, to enjoy those things at the end time. Now remember, the church will not be, it will not be a great, great big something. It's always through every age, just in the minority, just a little... And during the dark age, it almost went completely out. And then it goes almost out again in this age here at the Lady of Sin Church Age. Brother Jack invited me down to preach those seven church ages sometime. I hope I get a chance to do it. Oh, we sure enjoyed it at home, how the Holy Spirit blessed us. And now we're going over to Beaumont from here and on into the West Coast and come back and going into uh, Ohio and then down through Virginia and North Carolina. Coming back there, going to Bloomington, Springfield, Chicago, then leaving there and going to northern British Columbia, Fort St. John and Grand Prairie, Dawson Creek, and through there, hope to get back by June, the Lord willing, to, it's a six months then, and get back in time for the overseas, perhaps the Lord willing at that time. Now we're happy to be here tonight and see so many out and shining faces and hearts open and just a wonderful time, isn't it? We are under expectations tonight. I am yes. that the Lord will make known to us tonight His power and glory. Praise will show Himself to us. And whether He does or does not, then we will leave Him just the same. I just left a little woman coming in from Germany. A few weeks ago, she lost a baby, and she was standing near in California once where they brought in a little baby, had been dead, died one morning about three or four o'clock parents had drove all day and it's about three or four or five o'clock yes about six o'clock in the afternoon the mother sitting in the back of the car holding this little coal farm in her arms and when they come to the place where it's at San Bernardino they took a little baby brought it to where I was standing and I said oh how long's the baby been dead she said since this morning early and I picked up the little coal farm is already stiffened and these people stand around and held it in my arms, started praying to our precious Lord. I felt the baby is getting warm. Just kept holding it just a few minutes and started kicking, crying a hand over to its mother. So then when I see we don't make those things known. See? The thing of it is, there's too much, too much glamour today. In our, we're, we're trying to have a big something to advertise something. No, it's not for that. The world will never receive it anyhow. He comes to the church. It's for the church, the, the people of God. These great glamorous things don't work in the kingdom of God. 
People's going to be surprised when they find out who is the believers and who is not. Be like it was when John came, the first coming of Jesus. There was Anna at the temple and John the Baptist and, and just a few that really was believers, really received it. Now, we're looking for his coming. This little mother standing there, she had, her baby died over in Germany. Her husband's a chaplain. And they called up long distance by five times through a day and night to ask me to come so they know that God would raise that little baby up. I said, let me go pray. And I went and prayed, prayed that afternoon, that night. And I'll show you where the doctors believe or not. When she'd already give the doctor my book to read uh, on, uh, I believe called Prophet Visits Africa, something like that. And when she said, God will raise the baby up, the little mother said, God will raise the baby up. And the baby had been dead before they knew it, about four or five hours. And so they got the father word down to the base where he was. And the baby had been dead, died in the night. And so the doctor said, all right, tell you what I'll do. He said, I'll slip over and turn the oxygen back on. And he let that baby lay there for two days with the oxygen turned on it, waiting. And I was over here praying that it's going to fly me across with a jet. I can leave here with the army jet and be back the same day to Germany. And one morning about daylight, I got up. The wife went out of the room and she went out of the room. I just uh, wakened up and I lay in there a little bit. Directly, I heard something coming into the room. I looked. There was something moving in the room. I just jumped up. And I said, Lord, what would you have your servant know? I said, do not rebuke that. That's the hand of the Lord. So I got her on the phone. I said, no, God has called your baby. And so when she came over to see us, and I left her at the house when I left yesterday, she said, what was it, Brother Branham? My, my weakness of faith? I said, you have great faith. You prayed for your baby. You and your husband held on to God to raise that baby. And he refused to do it because he knows what's best and still you love him. That's real faith. Anybody, when mountains are moving and things can have faith, but let it go backwards one time and see how it works. That's when you prove whether you got faith or not. And every son that cometh to God must be chastened and trial of God. So remember, our chi- trials works patience and patience works hope and so forth. So we just hold on to God whether he blesses us or not. We are right there to believe him anyhow because he's promised it. And to see how he does now, before we approach the subject, the reading of the word, because faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. And now I don't want to be too long because Brother Jack, when he called me and asked to come by this way, which I was happy to do it, said they had some more sick folks who want to be prayed for. So, well, we thought we'd do that and then speak a little while to you before we pray for the sick folks. And I sent Billy down. Tonight, he said he'd give out prayer cards, so it was a big congested crowd, but we would call them from prayer cards, and not, we don't have to have it. So before we approach his word, let's approach him just for a moment of prayer. Would there be any like to be remembered in this prayer tonight? God bless you. God answer your prayers. He knows your needs. Now, with your heads bowed, I wonder if there's a sinner man or woman, boy or girl, would like to say, remember me, Brother Brandon, before God tonight as you pray. Would you raise your hand? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Many all over the building. About 10 or 15 hands up sinners. Some without the light of God in their soul by the Holy Spirit. Would you raise your hand and say, remember me, Brother Brandon? God bless you. Oh, just hands everywhere. Our Heavenly Father, we are approaching thy throne of grace and mercy. We come humbly in the name of Jesus because we are sure that he will hear us. For he said, you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. So that's the promise that we know that is true. No matter how much our unbelief hinders it, yet it's true. So we're believing tonight with all that is within us that you're hearing us. We believe that you are here and you will answer our prayers, especially for those sinners who raise their hands. May they see the light of God tonight. May this altar find them laying prostrate upon it, begging mercy for their sinful soul. Grant it, Lord. I pray for those that has not got the Holy Spirit in their life to guide them. May God come into that control tower tonight and take over, guiding their light, their life in this dark hour 
when it's come to a time where nations don't know what to do. But thou art the way, the truth, and the life. We're so glad that we ever found you, Lord, years ago, so precious to our heart. Your present help in a time of trouble. I pray for them, each one, that they'll be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. Bless the sick and the afflicted that's in the building and out of the building, convalescent to wherever they may be. We pray for mercy for them, Father. Now we would ask you to bless the church, continue to bless it. We want to thank you for what you're doing for this local body here of believers, these sainted, godly people who fear your name, Lord, and believe you that you will come someday to receive us. Though we sleep in the dust, it shall not hinder, for the trumpet of God shall sound the dead and Christ shall rise first. We're going anyhow. Death cannot stop us. Nothing can hinder us from meeting him. Oh, God, we're so glad to have the blood of Jesus applied to our souls, His Spirit dwelling within us. We pray now that you'll make every one of us citizens of the kingdom tonight. God, heal the sick and the afflicted. Get glory to thyself. And as we approach thy word now for a message to this waiting congregation, some waiting to be blessed, some waiting to be filled, some waiting to be healed, some waiting to be saved. Let the Holy Spirit minister to every one of us, Lord, according to our needs. And my need deeply is now, Lord, is you. Come speak, O God, and let the Holy Spirit move up on the Word as he moved on the water in the beginning. And say, let there be light as the Word goes forth. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the reading, if you'd like to mark it, and I've been used the last few weeks to speaking and marking down portions of scriptures. Now, I've got about four pages of them here. I don't know how I'd ever get to them. But if you'd like to do it, why well, you're more than welcome. I think sometimes now that the end is so nigh, I thought maybe I'd just teach a little on the subject. You might turn to St. John, the first chapter, and we would read the first Scripture out of the first chapter and the second scripture reading out of the fourth chapter of St. John. St. <clears throat> John, the first chapter and the 40th verse of the first chapter, we read down to the 43rd and the fourth chapter, we begin at the 24th, 25th, and 26th verse. First chapter, 40th verse. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finds his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonas. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. And in the 24th verse of the 4th chapter, we read this. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. And when he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. I want to take five lettered word from there for a text. <clears throat> M-E-S-S-I-S, Messiah. I want my subject tonight to be around the word, the Messiah. The word itself means the anointed one. Or it could be used, the anointed king. And it also means Christ. But we're going to use it first in this thought of the anointed king. It appears first in Genesis 3.15, if you want to put some scriptures down. The promised seed of the woman, which was to be the anointed one. All through the scriptures, all the prophets speak of that coming one. 
the anointed king. I like that word anointed. God anointing one. And he was to be a king who was to lead Israel to freedom from all the nations and make them rulers over the nations. The anointed king was to do that. I believe that Jesus of Nazareth fulfilled every description that all the prophets spoke of to be the Messiah. I believe that in Isaiah 9, 6, when the, the Israel had asked for a sign, God said, I'll give them an everlasting sign, a sign, an eternal sign. One that would be forever, so that a virgin shall conceive. That'll be a sign. And that one that'll be born of her, his name shall be called Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, and the Everlasting Father. That's right. Amen. That's right. And I believe that Jesus met every description of every promise that Jehovah made as the coming King and Messiah. No matter how greatly many believe that he was defeated in his work, he still is King. He is a King now. He's King of Saints. Revelation says, So thou King of Saints. He has a kingdom Aren't you glad you belong in that dominion tonight? In the dominion of the anointed one? Not only that, but he's made us kings and priests unto God. Anointed ones <clears throat> unto God. Now, although Jesus meeting all these qualifications, and the Jews had read these promises for years, how did it ever slip up on them and slip by without them seeing it? Those theologians, so well read in the scriptures, so particular about their scriptures, and yet they failed to see him to be the anointed one, it sounds though it could not have happened. Looks like they would have known him so well versed. But God blinded their eyes. It shows that it was the hand of God. He was too plainly known. His signs of Messiah proved him to be Messiah, proved him to be the anointed one. And for them to miss it, it sure had to be the hand of God to blind them that they did not miss it, or they, or where they would not have missed it, rather. And it's the same thing today. If the gospel's hid, it's hid to them that are blind. And the only way that they can receive sight is through God. Now, Isaiah 9, 6, we just won't read it, but he was to be the everlasting Father, That's right. Amen. the mighty God. Yeah. Yes. When God made man in Genesis 126, it shows, if you're putting that scripture down, Genesis 126, it shows that God made man to be a God to begin with. Man was made to be a God, a lesser God. He was made in the image and likeness of God. He had hands like God. He had feet like God, eyes, ears, and intelligence like God, his whole fiber, because he was a son of God's. And the, Jesus referred to him as God. Jesus said, how can you condemn me, saying, I'm the son of God? Isn't it written in your law that you're God's? And if they call those gods who the word of God came to, how can you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God? He was referring to the prophets, the anointed ones, lesser anointed. Jesus was so anointed that he was more than a prophet. 
Jesus was so anointed that he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He was God. The prophets had the same kind of anointing, only in a lesser condition. And in Genesis 1, 26, when God made man, he made him a God because he gave him a dominion. And he had rulership. He had power over the birds of the air, the cattle, over the winds, the waves, the, the fishes of the sea, the, everything. He had dominion over everything. He was a ruler, anointed a ruler, because he was in the likeness and in the image of God with an earthly domain. That's why the Bible says the earth is groaning, crying, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. The world is waiting for the man to come back into his right estate. Now, he is uh, made in the image and likeness of God. That makes his, when God made him, God gave him some of his spirit, part of his life. And he's in the likeness and the image of God. Therefore, like here in um, uh, man in his natural condition, the way we are now, you can see that he's much more than an animal, as they try to say we are. Because man in his fallen estate, yet being a fallen son of God, he still can better himself. He has an intelligence. He builds himself a better house, living conditions. He makes himself better travel conditions. He can speed himself through the air not 1,900 miles an hour in a jet plane or rocket. And he's, he's made himself so he can almost travel around the world just in a 24 hours, just send a, a light satellite in the air above the space of where the air is a turning in the orbit of the world and stand still and watch the world pass under him and go completely around in 24 hours. Just standing still at one place, go up in the air and stand there, come right back down and be home again. Just standing above the, the revolving earth, where the earth is pulling its current around, making the winds and so forth, the current. world turning about, around about close to 2,500 miles an hour. No, I say about 1,100 miles an hour. It's 2,500 miles around it, and it's going around every 24 hours, be a, pretty near 1,100 miles an hour. And he goes up in the air and defies that, stands above gravitation, and stands there and watches the world pass around under him. He's smart, intelligent, and he's, he's made up in the image and the likeness of God, and in him is light. Now, for instance, when a man gets saved, he's just about like the light that comes into him is about like this little white button on my shirt. That's when God comes into the inner part of a man. In the inner part of a man, or a man is made up in the system of a tabernacle. In the outer courts, then holy place and the holiest of holies, the Shekinah, glory, on the inside the veil. Now on the outside gates of a man is his five senses that enters to his body. On the inside, which is his soul, are the, the, uh, the, the soul is the nature of the spirit that's on the inside of his heart, produces his soul, which makes the atmosphere around him. He has also five entrances. Then on the inside, he has only one gate, one entrance to go into the Shekinah glory, where God can enter into him and take over in the control tower. And that way is through self-will. Whether you will to or not, that's up to you. But that's the only avenue that's open to the man that God can come into his heart is by self-will. Puts him right back like Adam and Eve on free moral agency again. You can choose right or wrong, either one you want to. Now, self-will. Then God comes into the man, into the heart, which is the spirit, then the spirit makes the soul, and then the soul dwells in the body. 
Now, when a man is converted, say, just like that little white button starts in his heart. Now, that part is God. God, when he's born again with the Spirit of God, God's Spirit dwells in him. Now, as he can let that Spirit grow and take out all the roots of bitterness and press God's way through him again, he can become back in the same condition that he was when he was in the Garden of Eden. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four, Verily, verily, I say to you, if you say to this mountain, Be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you have said will come to pass, you can have what you said. That's right. That's right. That puts him right back supreme again. Right. Puts him right back in the condition. Now we're made up of light meters. Inside of us is cosmic light. Now, that cosmic light is the light that they can take an x-ray with. The x-ray doesn't come from the x-ray light. It comes from your own light. And then if that cosmic light, say, could be pushed to a place that were not cosmic light, but eternal light, God could dwell supremely to do our thinking, do our walking, do our talking, then it's no longer the man. It's God in the man. I suppose I'm deaf in you by this thing because I hear it rebounding. It's got an awful voice. It isn't me. It's it. I see it. Lay it on to that. Now, he's got light, life, eternal life is the light of God that dwells in the man. And as he'll yield to the Spirit, more he becomes un man sinner like and becomes more God like. Here not long ago they took an x ray of a man praying for a sick man. Reader's Digest wrote it up and found out a ray of light coming from one of the men, not all of them, but one of the man's hands reflected a ray of light when they put a piece of lead for beneath the man's hand. I guess you read it yourself. In England they turned the healers they called them loose to all the hospitals, and there's eighty percent more healing done by divine healing and medical cures it performed. Reader's Digest picked it up over here. That was a Newsweek, and Reader's Digest picked it up and tried it, and they find that there is a ray of light when this man sincerely, not knowing they were doing it, put his hands upon a man and prayed an earnest prayer. They put the X-ray down and found out a light coming from his hand. God knew what he talked about when he said, Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He knows what he was speaking of. Oh, I want to see the church press into that place where it can come like God wants it to be. Then when God was made flesh and became the Messiah, then if we can yield ourselves to be the anointed like he was, we become Messiahettes. <laughs> little lights. That's what the church is supposed to be. Lights. Little anointed ones. And that's God's church. His standing light is the light of Messiah, risen Christ in his people, the anointed ones. Carrying forth his light into all the church ages. Sometimes it almost goes completely out. Then it comes back again. God's anointed one. God's Messiah church. If Messiah means the anointed one and means king, then if the church is anointed by the Messiah spirit, it becomes a lesser but still a Messiah because it has his light reflecting his power, reflecting his glory, reflecting his dominion. So it is Messiah. Oh, how it reflects him in his kingdom, in his domain. The trouble today, we've organized the church to death, and we got organization instead of Messiah light. We've got Russell light, proselyte, and all other kinds of light, but we need Messiah light. What the church needs today, the light of the Messiah. Oh, I love him for his goodness. Now, that is true. God called messiahs. God called us and we become kings and priests unto God. Like Jesus was God's high priest, we become a lesser priest. 
Jesus was God in fullness, dwelt in him, to shine forth the expression of God to the world, for God was in Christ, reconciled the world to himself. And as God was in Christ, reconciled the world to himself, God comes into his church and anoints him some messiahs. Oh my, do you see it? The same things he did is in his church. The same power he has in his church. And his church becomes a, his dom- dominion. And he's king over this dominion. And we are kings and priests offering spiritual sacrifices to God, the fruits of our lips giving praise to his name. Amen. Oh my, there you are. Messiahs. Messiahs. Little messiahs, little anointed ones. Anointed off of what? The main one. Anointed off of the great one. Oh, when Jesus was on earth, they could not deny him being Messiah because he did the signs of the Messiah. The Jews was blinded. And that's the reason they didn't see him and see his signs as Messiah. That's what's the matter with the church tonight. It's blinded. The outside world. They can't see it because the God of this earth has blinded their eyes to the things that are spiritual. Oh, if we could only understand. Jesus went about and did the signs of the Messiah. And the people blasphemed him. And if they blasphemed the great anointed king, Messiah... How much more will they call them of his household, of his kingdom, Beelzebubs, and whatever more they called him, they call you worse than that, holy roller, holy jumper, something or another. They always got a scandal name for it, because it comes from the devil. And they called them of his household, he said, more than they, if they called him that, what would they call them of his household. But still it makes just the same. Now you say, now, Brother Branham, Jesus had the sign of the Messiah. How do we know what was the sign? Well, when he come, the Bible said that when the Messiah come, he would be a, a prophet and would show signs of the prophet. Any scripture teacher knows that. Moses said, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. And those, when he performed those signs of showing himself like in the chapter 4 here, when he told the woman she had five husbands, she said, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. We know that when the Messiah comes, he'll tell us all things. He said, I am he that speaks to you. She ran into the city and told all the men of the city, Come see a man who told me the things I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Jesus said himself, if I do not the works of my Father, then believe me not. If I claim to have the anointing and do not the works of God because I am anointed by him, with him, it's not me that doeth the works, that's the Father dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. And if I do not them works, then don't believe me. But if I do them, believe them. Now, that was for Messiah, for Messiah Etz, the church. Here it comes. <laughs> Are you ready? St. John 14, 12, Jesus said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Amen. Messiah S. <laughs> That's right. Messiah S. The representation of Messiah on earth yet. Mark 16, he said, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. These signs shall follow. Amen. The Messiah S. <laughs> He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. How far to all the world? Who to every creature? Oh, I'm so glad. How are you going to rub that out? He said it's just only to the disciples. To the disciples, he said, to all the world. And to every creature. These signs shall follow them that believe. I wonder where people that don't believe in signs and wonders fall the believers. How would you ever read the history of the church and think it ceased with the apostles? The church ages I read, 
the Nicene Fathers, the Nicene Council, all, all the ancient writers I could think of reading, Hossus, Two Babylons, and many of the other ancient books, and all the way down to the early Catholic Church, down for the first 600 years after Christ, that was Irenaeus, St. Martin, Columbus, and all of those, every one of those saintly men, they preached the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. They preached the remission of sins. They preached speaking in tongues. They raised the dead. They healed the sick. Signs and wonders followed them far out to the dark ages and to the dark ages. There's been a little minority all the way down keeping that gospel light shining. What was it? Messiahs. Once holding forth the representation of the Messiah kingdom. Jesus never failed. He did just exactly what he's commissioned to do. And he come to establish a kingdom and he did it. The kingdom of God comes into the heart by the power of the Holy Ghost. Brings God's spirit upon anointed church to perform signs and wonders as he did to prove that Messiah is king of his kingdom. Amen. 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 I feel like shouting a little bit myself now. Oh, when there's so many people with a card out, come join us, come join this, and come join this, and we got the biggest, we got this, we got the most expensive. What difference does that make? All of that is folly. And we'll perish. But the kingdom of God is established in the heart and soul of a man. By the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he said, up on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Up on this revelation. And to have the revelation... You become a believer, and believing these signs shall follow them that believe. You see what Messiah is? Messiah is the kingdom of God, anointed ones. Them anointed with the same spirit he was anointed with. He once said to him one day, Well, my son set the right and left hand. He said, Can you drink the cup that I drink? Can you be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with? She said, Yea. And he said, You will. But the kingdom to set right and left hand is not mine to give. So it showed that we could drink the same cup of persecution, be called Beelzebub or whatever it might be, and still be baptized with the same spirit he's baptized with. So if he was called Messiah, which he was, because he was anointed with that Holy Spirit, and any church that's anointed with the same Holy Spirit is a Messiah, a, a littler, smaller God. And someday, when this body is resurrected, I hope beforehand, that God can get a hold of a bunch of people that will manifest His power in every dimension that it's supposed to be in. Messiah, anointed one. A king to deliver. A king's your kings and priests. Kings to bring in, priests to minister to. A Messiah. His signs was the Father in all ages reflected his life, his presence with his kingdom, people. Now don't you don't have to die to get this. You have to spiritually die, but you don't have to physically die. The inside is where God gets in to control you. And he, as he presses himself forward in you, don't let any root of bitterness, hatred, malice, strife, that'll, that'll run him right back again. Just get all the meanness and the superstitions and all the, the unbelief out of you. And every time you move out a little unbelief, God steps right and takes over. Move out unbelief. He told Joshua, every word of soldier your foot has set, that I give to you. And tonight, as we enter into the kingdom, God's kingdom, taking out all the Philistine unbelievers and all the Amorites and the Malachites and whatever more, throw it out of us like that, we take possession. Amen. Amen. I like that. Say, days of miracles is past. You Amorite, get out of me. I cut her footprint. I took over. 
There's no such a thing as, as seeing visions. Get out of here, you Amalekite. <laughs> I'm coming over. There you are. You're pressing out. From that little button, it's taking over the fibers of you, spreading out, God working through you, in you, around you. No wonder Elijah laid his body up on that dead baby and it come to life. It was God in that man. God had took over. He was anointed. Jesus said he was. Every prophet of God in the Old Testament was anointed with the Holy Ghost. They were. Then they were lesser lights. He was the fullness of God being Messiah. They was Messiahettes then. Smaller Messiahs. For they were anointed with the same spirit that he was anointed with, only he had it in the fullness. And every man today that's received the true baptism of the Holy Ghost is anointed with the same spirit that Jesus of Nazareth was that went about doing good and healing the sick. <laughs> oh, my. That makes me feel good. To know that he lives today. There's something about a man. He is a God. He was made to be a God. His purpose here on earth was to be a God, to have an dominion over everything in the earth. Oh, my. Now, don't let that stagger you because i got some more scriptures go down here. See? Here the other night, I saw on a telecast of a man with psychic mental faith set a glass of water and stood back and kept concentrating on that glass of water until he bursted it. Just by concentration. Watching that glass of water. And the glass cracked and the water run out. Just pure mental consecration. Why? That's his fibers. That's his makeup. If he can do that, got a power in him by mental thinking that can break a glass of water. And him being a sinner... That shows that there was something made in that man. He's in a fallen, per, fallen, perverted condition. But if that man can only get back to God and let God get into him, why with that power turned loose of the kingdom of God, he didn't have no conductor. He's like a shotgun. He just splattered every way. But if that spirit that's in a man could be converted and put Christ in there, where he's got a conductor... A conductor is a wire that conducts it. Amen. Yeah. And let a man with that same faith in the conductor of the Word of God, he can raise a dead pencil lepers, cast out devils. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's fashioned like a God. He looks like God. Sure was that reason God was man. Man was God. And this is his offspring's man. He's only trying to get a hold of man. Trying to get man into his hand. Now, not conductors. Now, not all theology is the right kind of conductor, you know. There's a lot of theologies as an insulator from it. <laughs> Got a lot of churches that says the days of miracles is past. There's no such thing as divine healing, only devils speaking tongues. Now, that's an insulator. You don't want nothing like that. Get away from that. Get back to the Word. The Word is God's conductor. The man that believes in God's Word has God's Word stands as high as these buildings around here when he walks out on it. It's the boss. It conducts the man. It conducts the spirit. When in there a man's made up to have a great faith. What makes... I preached here at this tabernacle some time ago on thirsting for life. What makes a woman want to get out here and rock and roll? What makes a boy, a young teenage kid want to do that? And not only that, but grandpa and grandma. What are they doing for? What makes them go out here? Why does people want to act the way they do? It's because they were made to thirst for something. And they were made to thirst, but to thirst after God. And they're trying to hush that holy thirst by letting the devil pile what he calls pleasures on it. You'll never, never, never satisfy until God comes in and takes control. You can dance, you can drink, you can commit adultery, you can do whatever you want to, and you'll wake up headache and someday in hell. But the reason you do that is because you were made in the image of God to thirst after God. God wants to get in there. God wants to let His Word come into you and use it as a conductor. God 
said so. Like Abraham. God said you're going to have a baby. How do you know you're going to have it? God said so. You're a hundred years old. How can you have it? God said so. He was anointed. Amen. He was anointed. And he had the word. And the word was anointed to him. It was a conductor to lead him to the baby. Any man or woman tonight will take that same word of God. By his stripes we were healed. Let the anointing, the Messiah, come upon you. That conductor will lead you right straight to your healing. It'll lead you to salvation. Oh, I just love it. That's what it'll do. Because you were made to thirst, made for God, and the devil tries to pervert you. Make you think you're having a good time out here. Keep you blinded like he does did the Jews until the time that you cross the separating line and then you're finished. It's about where this nation is today and not only this one but others. <laughs> the world won't believe it. The Bible said in 2 Timothy 3 that in the last days here that they would be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, and despisers of those that are messiahs. <laughs> Trady, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Don't you never look for this big high type evangelism and thing to do anything? That's not God's way of doing it. He came to his own. His own received him now. He was small. He didn't... Why well, he lived right there in Palestine all of his life. Really, and I say 80% of the people never know he was there. But he sent to the church. He was sent to the people that he was going to receive. He knowed his own. His own knows him. My sheep know my voice. Don't let that go over, sweet Lord. Please. Hold it. My sheep know my voice by my word. My word, if it's taught and don't declare the same thing that I did, that's the wrong conductor. Besides him. So has the eagle that's got it. We know that. And um, now we say in the man's... The man, before I leave that subject, the man, what is he? got a hand like God, got eyes like God, got ears like God, got a body like God. He was fashioned after God. He was given the earth and a dominion. He was made God over the earth to rule the earth, the lesser God. God rules the universe, everything. But man was given the earth to rule the earth. He was a, he was a Messiah. That's what he is tonight if he gets back to God. He is a Messiah, Ed. a little Messiah. If he ha- if Messiah means anointed one, and you're anointed, then what are you? It's exactly right. A Messiah, we call it that, just for the word's sake, till we get a little farther down the scripture to it. All right. Did you ever think of this? Let me just ask you something. Look at me a minute. This is my hand. That's my finger. This is my ear. This is my nose. But who's me? That's not me. That's something belongs to me. Amen. This is my hand. Well, who's me that owns a hand? <coughs> See, this is the house I'm living in. What kind of, well, it's got to be a, something in there called me. <laughs> Me's got to be somewhere because this is mine. <laughs> you see it? Me is somebody because I own something. I have a hand. It's mine. Well, who's me that that belongs to? That's your spirit. Well, it depends on what kind of spirit that is. Who you yield your members to, that's whose servant you are. And then, if you can crack a glass of water because that you have a a telepathy, a a mental conception, and a certain power that you can put off by being a, a human being, a power of mental force that's unseen and unknown of, only through that cycle, if you could bust a glass of water, but that kind of a spirit, a human, perverted, damned spirit, because you were fashioned in the image of God, what can you do when you let the God that fashions you come into you and control you? Amen! Amen. You can bring every promise of God to pass. Yes, sir. Every promise God promised will come to pass. All right. God's gift is His Word. God promised, made a gift, sent a gift. You take the gift and then with his word, there's your conductor. With the gift of God, if God gave you the gift of the Holy Ghost, you believe that? 
Well, the Word of God is conductor to use that power with. Whatever the Holy Ghost promises, that's what you can do. See, that's the thing it delivers. The Word. The Word goes right out and the Holy Spirit follows the Word. Wherever the Word's preached, you see your pastor preach it. First thing you know, across the building goes the Holy Ghost. See? That's right. It's a conductor of the Word. The Word goes, or the Word is a conductor of the Spirit. Because where the Word is preached, the Spirit follows it. Wherever it goes, while the Spirit follows the Word. Oh, I like that. I like sound Bible teaching and the Bible, Holy Ghost coming back, confirming Bible teaching. If the Holy Ghost doesn't confirm it, then you've got your wires crossed. You've got a ground somewhere. <laughs> yes, sir. If you can get that Word hooked up to the dynamo, that great thing that puts out the fullness of the current, He'll just, he'll just set that little wire far for you. <laughs> That's right. And it'll do things for you. When John the Baptist came forth, he was, he was, he was, one, he was part of the Word. He was like a Messiah. He was, he was ordained of God by the Word. He was a gift of God that came to the world. Do you believe that? Right. Isaiah 40 said he's the voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's right. And when he come and got in his position to cry in the wilderness, he was perfectly fearless with it. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Brother, now look how, how great he was. Now, when God spoke of John coming, why, well, he said all the mountains skipped like little rams, the leaves clapped their hands, and the high places is made low, and the low places made high. Now, imagine the theological interpretation of that was, holy brethren, someday God will pull back the quarters of heaven, drop down Jacob's ladder, and there will be a mighty prophet walk down out of the air and an angelic escort coming with him, coming down to the earth and he'll step down in the yard right here now with the temple where the holy temple is and if Caiaphas is the high priest he'll say your honor sir I've come down oh my what happened when he come it was an old fuzzy faced guy coming out of the wilderness piece of sheepskin wrapped around him probably never took a bath every three months walking out there standing in mud up to his knees and said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand that's when the mountains skip like little rams that's when the leaves clap their hands. That's when the high places is made low and the low places made high. Right. Yes. What, what man calls great, God calls foolish. I wonder some of our greatness of evangelism today. If God don't call it a bunch of foolishness, trying to flower up big somebody's stuff, shirts and everything, I just wonder what God thinks about it. Why he does. It ain't, this, uh, this gospel ain't going to shake the world. It's not world shaking, it's church shaking. It shakes the church. Amen. Right now, in these last few years, the church has been shook like it never, and the world knows nothing about it. It wasn't supposed to shake the world. They're dead anyhow. You can't shake them old dead carcasses out there. They're twice dead, plucked up by the roots. How can you do it? Well, I belong to so and Well, go ahead and belong to it. See? You can't shake them. Well, grandmother did so and so. That's no matter what grandmother done. What's God doing now? This is life walking. Amen. Grandmother lived in her days. It was all right. But you can't live in her life. Won't you wear her clothes then, sister? <laughs> Maybe that was just a little too rank, but... <laughs> no, you won't take her to church, but you won't wear her clothes. <clears throat> all true prophets of God call out against sin. All anointed ones do. That's true, they do. And God keeps His Word to everyone. He always does. God will take you, that is, you'll receive every promise if you go through the Pentecostal clearing house. <laughs> you know, you write a check. They won't pay that check until it goes through the clearing house. <laughs> it's got to go through the, the clearing house, then the check is paid off. And when you say you repented and you're ready to go through God's Pentecostal clearing house, God will pay off with every gift He promised. Amen. Amen. Try Acts 238 one time and see if that's his clearing house. You know, Paul met some people in Acts 19 hadn't been through the clearing house yet. <laughs> yeah, he said, Oh, this having great joy. But he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He said, Didn't know where they'd be. And he said, How was you baptized? <laughs> he said, We've been baptized all right. He said, How? To what? He said, Under Johnson, that won't work. You've got to go through the clearing house. God has done, fixed up his bank to pay off these promises with. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, these promises to you and your children, and them's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And when they met Acts 2.38, God honored the check. 
Went through the clearinghouse, and here it come back. They begin to speak in tongues and prophesy and magnify God. And God went a believer. Signs his name as a believer and passes through God's Pentecostal clearinghouse with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God will pay off every promise and everything. His bank is good. His promises are real. Everything signed in Jesus' name. Can't sign it no other way. Won't work. He don't know no titles. He only knows the name. Amen. You believe that? Amen. Certainly do. Yes, sir. Just his name is the only thing he... He said, ask the Father anything in my name. Now, don't you go putting four or five different names on there. You don't know nothing about it. Check comes back. You'll get a bogus invitation. But whenever you push through the clearinghouse, and God lets you where it comes to the clearinghouse, not what you ask, it shall be given. If you abide in me and my words and you, ask what you will. John 15, it'll be given unto you. Right. Then you have the anointing. That's the Messiah. Messiahs, rather. The little Messiahs. The same gift that was upon him, he obeyed the word. And when he come to fulfill the word, then God, he was the Messiah. He was, the, he was Jesus when he was born, but when the Holy Ghost came upon him after his baptism, he was anointed with God. God was in him. Because he come to fulfill the word. When you come to this altar, come here to fulfill God's word. On your invitation of whosoever will, let him come. Don't come signing, well, I, Lord, if you'll heal me this time, okay, God, believe I'll... Yes, sir, don't come like that. Come tell him you're a rascal. You're no good. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and you're no good at all. You don't deserve nothing. You deserve to die and go to hell, but because he invites you to come, I'm coming, Lord. Nothing in my arms I bring simply to thy cross I cling. There you are. He's going to honor that then. There's a pool of water right downstairs. See if he don't take care of his word. He always does when he goes through his clearinghouse. But it's got to come through the clearinghouse. When a man says he believes Jesus, accepts him as his personal Savior, God gives him a checkbook. Anything he wants to ask and out to bottom, he'll just sign Jesus' name to it. But don't go down there no other one because it won't work. <laughs> See? you got to go through the real Pentecostal clearinghouse. And when it does, then your check will be recognized and God's promises, it always pays off. Every one of his... Messiahs received their mark back. We're living in the last days. At the closing age, the Lady of Sin age. One of the darkest ages has ever been since the dark ages. A more hypocritical age right now than there was then. They had no light at all. Twilight is the deceiving hour. Anyone knows in travel, you better slow down a little bit when twilight comes. Is that right? We're to have a messenger in this twilight. Did you know that? God promised it. At the Lady of Sin age. I was reading in the Scriptures the other day up in the mountain. I was reading there, and I, the Holy Spirit told me, go up to a certain tree and stand there. He wanted to speak to me. I stood there for a half hour. He never said nothing. I laid down under this oak tree and laid myself out. I said, Lord, you spoke to me about a mile up here and said, come up here on the mountain here. This sportsman hollers, I called it, and you speak to me. Then he showed me. When he opened up Malachi, the fourth chapter, and I said, and, uh, I, behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Burn up the proud. If you want to put it down, Malachi 4. And he said, um, It shall burn the proud, and the, and the righteous shall walk out upon the ashes of the wicked. Well then, and he said, Behold, I send to you Elijah the prophet, before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. This will, and he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the children of the, uh, fathers, uh, the children's hearts to the fathers. Well, I said, That was right. I believe that. Jesus said when the disciples asked him that, they said, well, why did the, when he was claiming to be the Messiah, said, why does the scribe say that Elias must first come? Jesus said, he's already come. And you didn't know him. And then they understood that he spoke of John the Baptist. How many ever heard that? Well, my, you all read the Bible. John the Baptist. But remember, that wasn't the Elijah that he spoke of of the last days because the world never burnt and the millennium set in. Watch the scripture. Watch the reading of it. Turn to Malachi 4 just a minute. Watch there. I never knew that before. I never try to speak anything until the Holy Spirit comes first to reveal it. Watch. Malachi 4, 5. Behold, I will send to you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great day of the Lord, that great terrible day that he'll burn the earth. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. Watch. The first time Elijah come, he turned the hearts of the fathers, the old patriarch fathers, see back there, the old Jews, to the faith of the children who had just received him and believed of the coming Messiah. 
turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and a conjunction tying the sentence together. When he comes the second time, the hearts of the children back to the Pentecostal fathers. Hey, hallelujah! There you are. So how can the evening light be anything but back to Acts again? Right. When he said, before that day comes, that'll burn the earth like an oven and the righteous will walk out upon their ashes. Oh, brother, we are looking for a light to come. Get your, and remember, when this Elijah comes, I'll give you some of his description. When Elijah comes, that's the messenger to the Lady of Sin Church Age. We find Elijah coming before, remember, Elijah was the one that went up on a chariot, never tasted death. And the message of this great messenger that will come in this closing day, in the Lady of Sin Church Age, the Pentecostal Age, will be the one that will take the church to the rapture. Exactly. He was raptured himself. And he'll come with the church to the rapture. And remember again, I'll give you some of the descriptions of this man. He'll be a woman hater. He sure will. Look at look what he was on Elijah. Jezebel. Look on John. Arodia. See? Another thing. He'll be firmly against denominations. Look at Elijah. Look at John. Don't think to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. God's able to these stones to rise children to Abraham. He'll hate denominations. He'll hate immoral women. He'll be a man in the wilderness that lives in the wilderness, coming forth with his message. And he'll bring the hearts of the people. Oh, there's been a hundred Elijahs come up in the last days. Alexander, Tao, and so many in the world today saying they're Elijah, they're Elijah today. Elijah will go back to the original Pentecostal Ephesus church and bring that same message to the people with signs of the Messiah. The Bible said so. He said, there'll come a day that won't be a day, but in the evening time it shall be light. Is that right? Yes. Now look, the sun rises in the east. Now, this is, you say this has been a day. that the, We are children of the gospel day. This has been a day of darkness to the children. The morning star, only herald the coming then, right, vice versa from what it is, literally, because the morning star that rose back there is the morning star that hails the coming of the sun and one hails the going of the sun. The natural sun was leaving when that star hailed his and the gospel is just coming in. We are children of the light. But we're, the world is in darkness now. The church has been through the darkest age. It went through the dark ages. But the evening star, the evening star is the one that heralds the light. The evening star is the one for hails the light to the church. The church has just been living in the minority, just way down low, just a little group. But finally, the day will, that trumpet of God shall sound and the day will break eternal. The daybreak is coming. And this great one spirit of God that will come upon somebody in these last days that will herald this message will bring the hearts of the children back to the Pentecostal fathers. And how was the book of Acts wrote? Start reading it. <laughs> Look how we've contaminated with all kinds of foolish things of our own. But there will be someone come someday, a light, before they're going out, this open door that's set before the church. Watch and see if it doesn't come some of these days. God will send the Elijah, just as certain as I'm standing in this pulpit, he'll send. And that Elijah will shake the people right straight back to the original Pentecostal doctrine. I'll start out Pentecost and see how it was. See what they did. See if they'll be shaking hands and it'll be right straight back in when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost up there when he's all filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. These men said, now what can we do to get it? Peter said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises of you and your children and them as far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That was the original Pentecostal light. Now that's the morning star. And the evening star is to reflect the same light back again. He'll cry with a voice in the wilderness of the approaching Messiah. He'll also show, show, show the signs of the coming Messiah. He'll be a prophet of God, a great man. And when he comes, watch what he'll do. The Bible speaks that he'll do this. Also, before the day comes, there's got to be a time come into the church to fulfill what Jesus said. As it was in the days of Sodom, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. The Sodom. The world is in the Sodom condition. We all know that. 
Is that right, church? Amen. The world's in a Sodom condition. Now watch. What kind of a message did Sodom receive? They had a modern Billy Graham that went out and preached to the intellectuals. Just a couple was pulled out. And they was in disgrace and brought disgrace. And the wife turned to a pillar of salt. Looking back. Now notice that. One angel stood out with Abraham. The angel that stayed with Abraham, not knowing who he was, supposedly, actually said, Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? Said she's in the tent behind. And the Bible said it was in the... She was in the tent behind the angel. And he said, I'm going to visit you according to the time of life. I promise you that baby, I'm going to see if you get it. And Sarah laughed within herself. And when she did, the angel of the Lord said, why did Sarah laugh? Now he said that would take place before the coming of the Lord. As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Lord. Do you see, friends? It's going to reflect the same kind of a light that the morning star reflected. And he's going to do what? Call the children back to the faith of the fathers. The Pentecostal fathers. Paul, Silas, John, Mark, Irenaeus, St. Martin, Columbus. All those, those great martyrs that preached this gospel and held to it. Stayed directly with it and was pushed out. When the great classical bunch began to want an organization, you notice the Bible there said the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Then what was in deeds in one church age become a doctrine. You know what Nicol means? I looked it up. Nicol means conquer, overcome. Overcome what? The laity. When all the holiness goes into some man, just some man alone, he's the only one's holy. And he's the one the church can live any way they want to and make confessions to him. Huh? The Holy Ghost is for whosoever will. Laity and all. It isn't God's will for just to be a holy man. It's the Holy Ghost amongst the people that's born again. Showing signs and wonders. That same church, that evening star will reflect the same light the morning star did. But look when it's come. There will be a time. He said there will be not either night or day. You can't tell it, Tarly. A dismal day like we've been having. Rainy in our country. Dismal. But in the evening it shall be light. The evening light will come. Well, the evening light, the sun in the evening is the same sun that rises in the morning. The evening light is reflect the same light the sun reflected at morning. It's just the setting of the sun and the rising of the sun. You see it? Now we're in the evening time. Oh, thanks be to God for the evening. Mm, mm. Reflecting His promise, fulfilling it. Now the world's in a solemn condition. Oh, his eaglets, I got here where I preached on that one time. The morning lights, the morning star, the same message. It's been evening for a long time now. It's a dismal time, so a dangerous time. Remember, twilight is the most dangerous time of all, traveling. You have to watch. And this is the most dangerous day you ever lived in. The Bible said in Matthew 24 that it come to pass in the last days that it deceived the very elected, if possible. I heard Billy Graham say the other day in a message, he said... The elected is already deceived. No, no. The elected ain't going to be re- deceived. No, no. They won't be. No. Church members will, but not the elected. They were chosen from the foundation of the world. They cannot be deceived. It's impossible, said Hebrews 6. Uh, they will not be deceived. But it's a dangerous time and, uh, for, for the, the church in this evening time because, they're, look, you can, they'll go to church and almost be just exactly like Pentecostal believers. You'll, they'll shout, dance, speak with tongues, and everything else. So close that would deceive the very elected, if possible. But remember, the only way where you know that you're right is follow the conductor, the Word. It brings forth the absolute truth, you see. Keep on the conductor. Just be filled with it. Yes, sir. Now we find out that this lady you'll see in church, the church agent we're in now, if you want to read it, he, uh, Revelation is the third chapter. We see what kind, what done, what taking place. And this message is supposed to go forth. The church had been so worldly and organized itself till they organized its very God right out of it. The most pathetic scripture I ever seen is Hebrew, as uh, Revelation, the third chapter. When at the Lady of Sin Church, Jesus, standing on the outside of his own church, knocking, trying to get back in. At the first church, he was walking among the seven golden candlesticks of church ages. 
but in the lady of sin, he is on the outside trying to get back in his own church. It shows what this age has done to him. They've organized him out. They've organized his doctrine out. They've organized his Bible out. They got a book of creeds, of philosophies, and so forth that they're reading, accept it instead. Cold confessions instead of letting God come in and make a Messiah out of them. Give them the baptism of the Holy Ghost and show signs and wonders. They organized it all out. Pushed him over to one side. Now he's on the outside making his last plea, trying to get back in again at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The lady of sin church age, trying to get back in his own church where they pressed him out. Isn't that pitiful? That's the most pathetic thing I can think of, of him and his own church giving his life for that church and doing the way that he did and sent the light to the church and set it in. And they rejected it and pushed him on the outside, except it's some kind of a creed or something the church had made up. And there he is standing at the outside trying to get in. Now let me just in closing say this because it's getting too late. I've got about 20 more scriptures over down here, but I won't get to them. Let me say this. Did you notice on the outside of the church, are you listening? Say amen. amen. On the outside of the church trying to get in, remember, the ones inside the denomination never saw him. It's the ones on the outside saw me. They heard a knock, but they didn't see it. That's the way it is today. A man that cannot... It'll go around today saying, well, I never seen nothing about it. I went over there. I never seen that. See, he can't see it. He's all organized up so tight he can't see nothing. But if you can just ever get free enough, get outside to look who's standing out there knocking to see who it is doing these things. You see what I mean? Get outside. Outside. Don't be so organized. Because when you do, you can't see nothing. The only thing you can see is your denomination. But if you can get on the outside, you'll see Jesus and all of his glory and his mercy trying to get into his people. Oh, I look at him stand there. I was talking about Messiah, the Messiah, Messiah, Eps. They're the light of the church today, the light of the world. Jesus said to the disciples, you're the light of the world. Now, you're a candle that sets on a hill, uh, that, a light that can be seen from everywhere. We are the light. If we are, we reflect his Messiah light. The Messiah sign follows the Messiah. The Messiah, it's the same as it followed the Messiah. Here some time ago in your lovely church, I believe I preached on the subject here, as the eagle stirreth her nest and <laughs> fluttereth over her young. I believe I preached on that down here, Brother Jack, or somewhere. Yeah, eagle stirring her nest. I like to watch the big eagle. You know that father, you know, God called himself an eagle. Did you know that? He called his prophets eagles. Sure he did. He told his, uh, this eagle, uh, Jacob. He found him in a, in a will howling wilderness, and as the eagle stirred its nest. Now, we find out he calls himself eagle too, so he's Jehovah eagle. And then he's got a bunch of eaglets. <laughs> eaglets, like messiahs. <laughs> eaglets. Now I can see the big father eagle as he's walking around over the nest. He loves to look at his children. Oh, my. How he loves to look at them. How they look, look just like he does. They're not hybrid. They're not half buzzard and half crow and something else. They're eagles. Yeah. Amen. That's why right here we're Methodists, Baptists, and assemblies, and so and so and so and so, buzzards, crows, and everything else. How can we be eaglets? How can we when we see the sight of God moving among us and call it something else? Hallelujah. He likes to because he knows that they're thoroughbred. they are got his flesh. they got his blood. They got his spirit. Hey, Amen. How proud he looks over his eaglets. Walking around. <laughs> Amen. The little eaglets look at him and say, How great thou art. How great thou art. Look at myself. Oh, my. Going to take a flight one of these days, ain't we, Papa? See? Oh, how he likes to look at him. They look like him. They act like him. They are his flesh, his blood, his spirit. Amen. Amen. That's the way God's church is. His eaglets. His messiahs. They look like him. They act like him. They preach like him. They do the works that he did. The things that I do shall he also. More than this shall he do because I go to the Father. Amen. These signs shall follow my eaglets. Amen. They'll do just as I do. If my spirit's in them, then they'll do the works that I do. If they don't do the works I do, it's because my spirit's not in them. Why, if you look down one of them little eagles, the first thing you know, he had a bill like a buzzard. He said, now, wait a minute here. There's something wrong. 
An old crow jumps up on this and say, Call, call, call. The days of miracles is past. Call, call, call. There's no such a thing as divine healing. I, I bet he'd just take his big paw and oust him right out. He'd break his neck. He says, Sure as oil. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's no such so mental to that, but there's no such a thing as them things in these days. You buzzard. <laughs> Of the flesh, and that's dead flesh, too. <laughs> that's what the... God wants eagles. He wants messiahs. He wants men and women who have signs and wonders, anointed one. He wants a church that's filled with the Holy Ghost. A church reflecting Him. The same yesterday, today, and forever. God didn't die. He just born the kingdom. God is Messiah it's in it. Amen. amen. Every word he says is say amen to it. Amen. That's right. Yes, sir. They look like him, act like him. They believe it. Got the conductor moving right on out with signs and wonders following. That's Messiah. Messiah lives tonight. Amen. He isn't dead. He's alive forevermore. You believe that? Amen. What did he say it would be? It shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find. Is that right? Yeah. In that waterway is the light today buried in the precious name of Jesus. Young and old, repent of all your sins. The Holy Ghost will surely enter in. The evening lights have come. It is a fact that God and Christ are one. Man was made to be a God. God was made to be man. Oh, Messiah, the great Jehovah, dwelt in a human body. He made that body like his so he could be a human body, a Messiah, at, to govern his earth and control it. Amen. The works that I do shall they do also. Oh, I like that. Jehovah walks back and forth over his throne and says, That's my eaglets. They are, they are flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. They're born of my spirit and washed in my blood. <laughs> Amen. They're mine. They're mine. Anything I tell them, they believe it. Wow, they're eagles. That's what they are. They're eagles the same as I'm an eagle. They're, they're little gods where I'm big God. That's right. I'm Jehovah Papa. They're my children. There you are. So he promised these things to be taking place. Now, if we're children of his kingdom, them signs should be making themselves known among us. Is that right? Now, we can speak of it and talk of it and stay all night on it, but will it work? That's the next thing. That's the next thing. If it works, then it's true. God's Word promised in St. John fourteen twelve, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he also. Is that right? I believe that, don't you? All right, let's bow our heads just a moment. Father God, the hour of time has come. We realize that there's no way for us to, to find anything, no place to go now, but only to Jesus. We are, we're at the end time. We see all these things taking place. We see our nation just at bankruptcy. We see our, our world at bankruptcy. We see communism sweeping in an ungodly spirit called the Iron Curtain. We see one rising under in China called the Bamboo Curtain. Then we see one rise called the Purple Curtain, the Roman Curtain, taking over the world. Now, Father God, we pray that you'll let us remember this, that these things are your promises. You promised us these things in the evening time. We're so glad to see you making your word fulfilled in our lives. We pray, Father, that you'll cause a hunger and thirst now, these few words have been chopped up and set out. I pray that you'll make them known to the people's hearts, that they'll realize that God is a power. He's a power. Christ was the fullness of God. He was the anointed Jehovah. He was Jehovah anointed body, Jesus of Nazareth. God was in Christ, reconciled the world to himself, and he died that he might sanctify these fallen human race and bring them back to sons of God again to be anointed ones anointed with the Holy Spirit 
to go forth to reflect his kingdom until he returned all the way through the seven church ages. And at the last age, we find him on the outside of his own church trying to get back in. But he promised that he would send the light in that day. And we have found it, Lord. We have found it and see that it's a correct conductor because we hook the word that we believe with the God of heaven who promised it and find out that the current that performed the first signs comes right back again and performs the same Messiah signs. Then, Father, we know that the word that we call the conductor is right because it produces every promise. We thank you for it, Father. We pray that you'll save this, the unsaved, heal the sick, fill with the Holy Ghost those who desire it, and encourage your church. While we further wait on you, Lord, in the healing service, we commit these people and all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. What is it now? I watch the clock and I don't want to keep you too long. We got to start early in the morning too. What did he promise? He promised that in the evening there would be light. He promised. Can you see what I mean when I say Messiah? Else raise up your hand if you do. If Messiah means anointed. And he was the Messiah because he was anointed with the fullness of God. Then we are anointed too with the same spirit. Now you say, if, how do you know you're anointed with the same spirit? Well, the same life. The same things that he did. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also. What he say in St. John 5, 19? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing but what he sees the Father doing. That doeth the Son likewise. And he, correct, Messiah would have the same message. Is that right? And remember, who was it received the baptism first? The Holy Ghost baptism? Jews, who next? Samaritans, last was the Gentiles. Is that right? Because they was brought in after the death, burial, and resurrection. And they did. Now, they received the message, all right. Now, notice. Ham, Sham, and Japheth's people. Now, Ham's people and uh, Japheth's people was to see the, that's the tribes of the earth, the three tribes of the earth. Now, we see that the Jews received the Messiah signed by Jesus. The Samaritans received it by Jesus. But now, the last days, now the Gentiles didn't because they wasn't looking for no Messiah. We were heathens in them days, our people, the Anglo-Saxon. We were heathens, worshipped idols, Moabites and whatever more, Amorites and so forth. That, that was our people. Now, but now for 2,000 years we've looked for a Messiah. Now how did he make himself known back there? By sending Jesus and anointing him with his own spirit. And Jesus said, if I do not the works of my Father, then believe me not. Is that right? If I do the works, you believe the works. Now, because why? He didn't hook up with their organizations, their denominations. He stood out from all of them, bawled them out. And they said he tore up churches and everything. Could you expect his spirit to do anything less when he comes again? He'll do the same thing. Because it can't change. It's God. We can change. Our human selves can change. But God can't change. He has to be the same. He's infinite. We're finite. So he cannot change. So when he comes upon his church in the last days, what will it be? A pulled out. A group of people anointed with the Spirit of God. They will be messiahs. See? They'll be anointed ones. And if his Spirit is in them, they'll do the things that he did. Just exactly. Isn't that, isn't that right? Then if you, say, if you can take that and connect the Word with the dynamo, then if the, di- now if the current comes back saying it's right, you've got a connection. If you put it up there and nothing happens, you've got an insulator somewhere. You've got a broken line somewhere. Okay? But put it up against the dynamo. If the current comes through, then you've got a, con- a straight conductor. You've got a conductor. And if you want to believe it so, I'll tell you how I received it. I come just the way the Bible said it. I never varied for any denomination. My own Baptist church put me out. Because I wouldn't ordain a woman preacher. It's not scriptural. And it's not right. And I said, you might as well put me out because you have to sooner or later. But I'll just walk out before you do do it. All right. Then, I, uh, then when it comes to a lot of these stuff today, I, when I was just a boy, before I ever heard of oneness, twoness, three gods, four gods, there, what they got, I believe there was one God. Now I believe that his name was Jesus and I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ by a missionary Baptist preacher because I asked him to do it. 
I've preached it ever since. There's no scripture in the Bible. You bring me one scripture where anybody was ever baptized in any other. Show me one place in the Bible where anybody's ever baptized using the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Or read the history and tell me until the Catholic Church is organized. Anybody that's ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and I'll walk out of the pulpit. It's a Catholic creed, and every man or woman baptized that way is not baptized into the Church of the Living God. They're baptized into the Catholic Church. That's their creed. Show me the Scripture. Show me by history. Anything outside the Catholic Church ever did it. Luther brought it out in Wesley after him. Here we come down in this. Each one of them churches, down to that time, said, you've not denied my name. But when it come out over that thigh tower of church age, he said, you've got a name. You've got a name that you're alive, but you're dead. That's it. I don't mean that the water baptism in Jesus' name saves you, but that's correct Christian baptism. You're saved by faith. That's right. Through Christ. That's right. But that's correct baptism. That's the way you shall be baptized. Exactly. Well, you must be to keep in the Bible order. You must be baptized that way. Then when you have received the Holy Ghost and the power of God comes up on you, then you'll do the very same things that Jesus did because it's His Spirit in you. If there's not, there's something wrong. That's right. That's right. Oh, That's right. glory. I feel like I'd almost speak in tongues now myself. You know, the first time I ever spoke in tongues was in a Baptist church preaching. I stand up on a platform preaching as hard as I could and jump them out in the middle of the aisle. And I said some words in unknown tongues, not knowing what I said, looked around to all the congregation, stretched their necks and looked around, and I, something said back to me, I'm the uh, wilder, uh, rock in a weary land, the shelter in a time of storm. And first time I ever spoke in tongues. And my, I know there's something real about it somewhere I didn't know, but I kept on till I found it. Just kept on going. Sold all everything and bought that great pearl. My, I don't care if the Bible says, I, I believe it. I don't care how many organizations, how many says this, that, or the other. It's God's Word and it's the truth and I stay right with it. That's all. And the only way you're ever going to do it is stay word by word with the Bible. I was preaching that I don't have four living creatures trying to, and they, was, they were not beasts because the words and their living creatures in Hebrew and Revelation's fourth chapter. There's the word translated zoon, Z-W-O-N, which means living creatures. In Revelation 11 and Revelation 17, that's uh, another name altogether. And it means, uh, it means uh, wild, untamed beasts, but this was living creatures. What they were, they were cherubims, like was at the gate, guarding the holy place. We see them in Ezekiel, the first chapter, when the amber light of God and the rainbow was there, and the glory of God, which we got a picture of it, the same way that they saw it there. We had a picture taken of it. And there it was, right in the building, taking a picture of the light, right? Just exactly the way Ezekiel saw it. Ezekiel 1, 26 to 28. Show you the picture of it. Just like he saw the glory of God. Now, you see that eye of the camera can sometimes see the thing that the human eye can't see. That's right. They've seen it when humans don't see it. But we just become so chugged up our light meters, where they ought to be holy light meters, they're chugged up so with foolishness and denominations and things we can't see no farther than our nose or something like that. We don't see those things out there. And the Holy Spirit is here today. He's just the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same power, the same signs, the same wonders, the same God, the same baptism, the same Holy Ghost, the same same. Everything's the same. Because He can't change. Amen. All right. Now, I believe He said give prayer cards to A's. Is that right? Prayer card. You believe it out there, church? Amen. That check has to be endorsed right, or they'll return it back. Plainly, not guesswork, but really know what, what it is. Now, fill it out. And now, he has already... Now, let's take a sick person. Somebody raise up your hand that's sick. It's, it's, we'll never put foot on this earth until the church is gone. How many knows that? We which are alive and remain shall not prevent or hinder them which are asleep. The trumpet of God shall sound. We will rise, be caught up, and meet him in the air. That's right. Then he returns back to make himself known to, to, to like Joseph did to his brethren. 144,000. But the church is raptured and gone in. Remember, when Joseph made himself known to his brethren, his wife and all of us in the palace, no Gentiles around. He dismissed them all. And so they are, the church age dismisses at the third chapter. John was caught up. Representing the church, and from there to the 19th, she now doesn't appear again till she comes to be wed with her bridegroom. Now, it's the going of the Jews from the fourth on in, the outcome of the Jews. Now, if Christ comes and shows himself alive tonight, 
Now, if I have said right, if I have said right that he was Messiah, and the believers, that means he's the anointed one, and we have his anointing, won't the same anointing perform the same thing each time? I love you. Brothers, it's going to be too late to talk to you like that, the judge. When you're left, I want you to be ready. We're, we're, I don't know when he's coming. But if he comes tonight, I want to be ready. If you don't come till next week, I want to be ready then. So I want to be ready. When, if I sleep, that won't hinder me. I'll rise anyhow. But while I'm here, I want every ounce of me to count for him. And I, I want yours to do that too. Now, this lady here, I don't know her. Do the same thing that was done to Sodom. How many believe that now with all your heart? All right. Now, I believe, now remember, so that you won't get the human part into it, God only works through man. How many knows that? Man is God. That's the reason Jesus was God. That's God was worked through a man. Is that right? Reconcile the world to himself. Now, he was Messiah. Then you and I become Messiahs, or little Messiahs, because we're anointed with the same spirit. A grammar school education and I don't know nothing. Only thing I know I'm saved. That's all I know. I know Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's my Savior. I believe. I believe He was God. made manifest in flesh. I believe He died, rose again, and come back in the form of the Holy Spirit to anoint the church. I believe every word of that Bible is the truth. God give me faith to make an answer. So, I've seen happen since I left you all. Just around maybe 20, 30 calls a day in different places. And they're at home. It would make some body fine books. It sure would. But we don't stand it out. Just now and then to the church. We don't broadcast it out. Jesus said, Tell the Lord. This is for the church. It's for the believers. Now, you, or if you're a believer, now you see if the Holy Spirit will move. And if it will, how many of you will believe with all your heart? If it will do the very same thing it did when it was on a man called Jesus of Nazareth, you'll believe that the, that the science is the truth. Brother, but it's his spirit. I'm a sinner. But it's his spirit that has to work through somewhere. He's got to have somebody to work through. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Is that right? Yeah. He had his ups and downs. His temper got up and his indignation. He just like I was. You are. But he prayed earnestly. He was a prophet. He prayed earnestly. He shut the heavens. Walked around and said, Rain or dew will not fall, but I call for it. He had an answer. That's the reason I'm standing here tonight before this woman. God promised. I believe God. I see the vision. How many heard him tell that before he went to them? Look at your hands. Brother Jack was standing out there when it happened. A little boy killed just exactly what? Just exactly what we wrote on the body of our Bible. There he come back life, and those spirits gone out. The land of the dead. God called it back. See, a middle power of a man that can crack a glass, a sinner, is made up to be that. Let God come in there and go back and bring the dead back. See? It's his promise. First you find the will of God, then do it. But said it ain't God's will ever it is God's will. We've done seen it done. I've seen it done about five different times, and I know it's true. Now, here's the same thing in an amateur way. Like Jesus did. Speak to the woman. The day before yesterday, this man came up to my house and stood there and he said, I started out the gate. I was going to send him more to office, but the person man. He said, Brother Bram, I said, Yeah. He said, Could you help me? I said, Well, if you go, something said, take it in the house. As soon as you sit down, I said, don't tell me who you are, I'll tell you. Started off like that and told him all of the Holy Spirit getting revealed to him all his life. He said, that's right. That's right. He said, sir, that's right. I said, You're, you don't live here, you live in Madison. You've been down in Evansville, Indiana, and it have gotten a bunch of a cult down there, didn't you? Yeah, Bible school, he thought it was. He said, mercy, goodness, man, how do you know that? And so when we, when I said, say, I don't understand that. And I said, would you ever one of my meetings? He said, I never know to an angel. Just about five, about 25 minutes ago, some man told me when I was passing through the local, come over here, a man named Mr. Sandy. He said, I never know to an angel. I said, well, well, that's my ministry. He said, if I understand it right, Jesus was talking to his disciples and know what was in their heart. That's right. He said, then that's God speaking through you to me. I said, boy, you know more about it. A lot of us follow the knees for a long time. That's right. He said, well, praise God, it's all finished now, then. There you are. Boy, just flew in from England. Same thing. I hear it is. Again, the tavern. This is about 48 years of it. He's 
God isn't just an elderly person, old, real old lady. It's your mother. She's got something in wrong with her ear. She's got complications too, isn't that right? That's right, basically. Dr. Junior.
had all your life. You believe he'll make you well? Let me explain to you. I believe the Holy Ghost is here. I believe in the anointing. Oh, Jesus, this poor young girl bound with this devil of oppression. Come out of her, Satan. I adjure thee by the living God and believe her. You can't keep her any longer. Depart from her. Be well. But do you believe that God will heal your heart that you will? I lay my hands upon my sister in the name of Jesus Christ for her to be healed. In Jesus' name I have it. Amen. I lay my hands upon sister in the name of Jesus Christ. May she be healed. Amen. Believers in here. Well, fine. Now, while I'm praying for how many wants to be prayed for, raise up your hand. All right? Now, I want you to lay your hands on one another while I'm praying here. Just lay your fear, believers. No, oh, wait. You're, you're just as much of a sign as anyone else is if you're a believer. Is that right? These signs shall follow what? Them. T-H-E-M. Plural. That believe. Is that right? If they lay their, their, their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Is that right? All right. Just bow your heads and be praying for one another now while I'm praying for the church. Where is Brother why well, you certainly lost a lot of weight from when I see it several years ago. I ate your house one day. Um, I don't, I don't know what you're here for. You know that, but it might help me if I just talk to you. Would it? Because I know you so well. It might help me if I talk to you. And I know you. Elsie and I went out and got a catfish. And you cooked me. That's all I'm doing. I appreciate it. Y'all you got your spirit now? You know something takes place then. I caught your spirit. You had a lot of trouble. You've been in a hospital or something. You've been asleep. That's right. You've got complications. You just broke down, nervous, and trouble in your ears. And that's right. Real nervous and trouble. You mean I can take it all of you by the name of Jesus Christ? Come here. Thou art the devil that tries to hold this. Godly woman, I challenge thee in the name of Jesus Christ to be part of her. I set her free in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I am praying for that believer. 